In this video, I'll be deriving a product and limit formula for the gamma function and the derivative of the gamma function. Okay, so what I'm going to first observe, the k minus 1 factorial is equal to n plus k factorial divided by k times k plus 1 all the way up until k plus n. Because if you imagine that's going to be n plus k, n plus k minus 1, that will cancel out there, all the way down until k, which will cancel out, and you'll be left with k minus 1 factorial. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a different function, c and k, which I want to converge to 0 as n becomes really large. So I want them to the top and the bottom to converge at basically the same rate. Okay, and the function to do this with is going to be kind of strange how Euler came up with this. It's going to be n plus k factorial over n to the k times n factorial. Now, you might be wondering, why do I want a function that converges to 1 as it becomes infinite? Well, because then, right over here, I have a relation right there and right there. So that if I divide them, that limit will go to k minus 1 factorial, and I'll be left with a function that gives you k minus 1 factorial as a limit, which is exactly what I want. Okay? Okay, so what's this going to be? Well, n plus k factorial, n factorial on the bottom. You can uh, simplify this to just um, to just n plus 1 all the way up until n plus k. What I'm going to do is on the bottom, instead of doing it normally, you can see I have n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 2, n plus k. There's k different products uh, here. I'm going to write this lower because I keep running out of room. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be n plus 1 all the way up until n plus k. And then over, instead of n to the k, I know that's just n times n a bunch of times. Okay, k times. Which is going to be equal to um, 1 plus... 1 by that n plus 1 over n. I'll write this down here. Which is going to be equal to 1 plus 1 over n times, and then I'm going to have 1 plus 2 over n, if you can imagine it, because there'd be an n plus 2 divided by n. 1 plus 2 over n, all the way up until 1 plus k over n. Okay, now it's quite obvious to see that as n goes to infinity, this converges to 1 because 0, 0, 0, 1 times itself, k times is 1. Okay, so, so uh, implying that the limit is n goes to infinity, c of n, k is equal to 1. Okay, pretty clearly. Okay, so now what we do is we get rid of that shared term and look at the division. So we do over here k minus 1 factorial divided by c of n k is going to be equal to that denominator is going to be the denominator, that denominator is going to be the numerator, n to the k times n factorial over then what is it? It's going to be um, k times k plus 1 all the way up until k plus n. Okay? So then, what I'm going to call this is going to be gamma sub n of k. Why gamma? Well, it's the gamma function, really, if you take the limit. Okay? So then I get k minus 1 factorial 
by taking the limit on both sides, it's going to be the limit. So n goes to infinity because that limit's going to be 1. k minus 1 over factorial. Uh, k minus 1 factorial over 1 is going to be k minus 1 factorial. The limit of this, which we just call gamma. Gamma of k. Okay? And this generalizes it to the real numbers, although I won't prove that it converges for all the real numbers. And so, we now have our function gamma of z, uh, the complex numbers even, all the complex numbers except for the negative, uh, the negative even, the negative integers and zero. So, gamma of z is going to be equal to the limit because n goes to infinity of this, n to the k times n factorial over k times, uh, not k, z, replace all the k's with z, z times z plus 1, all the way up until z plus n. Okay? Now, I claim that this gives us a very natural infinite product to replace it with. So how do I get this infinite product? Well, what I'm going to do is again, well, not again. What I'm going to do, right there, z plus 1 all the way up until z plus n, there's n different ones there. So n to the k times 1 times all the way up until n, that's n factorial. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down and divide by it, right? Because I can do that. Because if I divide by something in the numerator, uh, in the denominator, I get it in the numerator. And so I get over here the limit is n goes to infinity of, we're going to have n to the k divided by z times z plus 1 times z over 2 plus 1, right? Because that'd be z plus 2 divided by 2. It's going to be z over 2 plus 2 over 2, which is 1, all the way up until z over n plus 1, which I can rewrite as a product. The limit is n goes to infinity of, I'm going to write it e to the natural log. I'm going to write it as e to the natural log of n times z times the product from k I'm going to call it k, equals 1 of k equals 1 until n of the reciprocals of z over k plus 1, the reciprocals of that. Now, what else can I do with this? How else can I make, uh, how else can I manipulate this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over here, so I'm probably going to be covering up a lot of the math, but... It gets kind of complicated. So I'm going to use the harmonic function, the partial sums of the harmonic function, so that I can get something called the euler mascheroni constant. Now, the euler mascheroni constant is uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of the difference between the partial sums of the harmonic series, or the sum from k equals 1 to n, of 1 over k, right, the harmonic series, partial sums of those, it's going to be the sum of the limit of that minus the natural log, because they grow at practically the same rate. Okay, so that limit exists, and it's like 1.6 something, I believe. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace natural log of n with natural log of n minus h of n, the harmonic series. Okay, so I'm going to have it's over here. The limit is n goes to infinity of e to the z, e to the z times, I'm going to have natural log of n minus h of n, the partial harmonic series, plus h of n, okay, times the product from k equals 1 to infinity of z over k plus 1 to the negative 1. And that's why I split it up so largely. And now, because it's huge, now I have the limit as n goes to infinity of e to the negative gamma. 
Okay, so I'm going to have to flip it, right? Because that's going to be the negative every time. So that limit is going to go away. E to the negative gamma Z times the product from K equals 1 to N there. The product from K equals 1 to infinity here of Z over K plus 1 times E to the Z over N. Why is it e to the z over n? Well, because e to the sum of z over n, right? That's what we have there. Z distributed in, split it up into a product. Get it right there, put it inside the product. e to the, pro the sum is the product of each individual one. Because e to the x plus y is e to the x times e to the y, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as a huge reciprocal. Okay, so it's going to be e to the gamma z times the product from k equals 1 to infinity of z over k plus 1 times e to the negative z over n, that entire thing to the negative 1. Now why am I going to write it like that? It's because, remember, this is equal to the gamma function of z. Right? If I then then what I'm gonna have is that gamma of z is the e to the gamma z product k equals one to infinity of one plus z over k times e to the negative z over k, and that entire thing to the negative 1, take the natural log of both sides, because if I take the natural log of both sides, that gives me the derivative of this fairly easily, right? Natural log, that's going to be uh, negative. We're going to have gamma z plus the sum, because we're converting all of this, using the fact that natural log creates sums, which makes it derivative really, really easy. Okay, times the sum, natural log of that, plus the natural log of that, which is just minus c over k. Whoa, okay, so then, der derive both sides, I get gamma prime of z divided by gamma of z it's going to be equal to something really simple. It's going to be negative gamma plus the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of derivative of that turns out to be 1 over k plus z minus 1 over k. Right, you can check that because that's going to be 1 over that times the derivative. Then you factor in the k. Okay, this is really simple. This is just looking at all the differences of the reciprocal plus some amount minus the reciprocal normally, and gamma plus that, the Euler Mascheroni, and then you negate it. Super simple. Now, what we usually call this, we usually call this psi zero of z, and then multiply by gamma of z on both sides. And then we get gamma prime of z is equal to gamma of z times psi zero of z. And we're finally done.